else it does apply to everybody. No, you, you did not keep nobody else's phone. And you finna give me my shit. I'm, don't touch me. That's on my mom. Don't touch me. Girl, don't touch me. Girl, don't touch me. Imagine a teacher and a student exchanging blows in the classroom. In the classroom with other children there recording. I say that all these things are signs of the end time. Because, okay, so now let me just even analyze mm -hmm. the, the story a bit, right? She, the teacher held back her device, her mobile device, and then she confronted her and said, why is it just my device you're holding back? You're not holding down um, others. Why is it just mine? And then she tries to raise her hand, and then the teacher is like, I'm going to show you I'm not your mates. And then she decides to. So both of them are wrong. Absolutely. Because in the first place, the teacher shouldn't even yeah. do that, right? Yeah. At the same time, the child shouldn't also be that rude. Yeah. But I don't think the teacher should have stooped so low to exchanging blows with the child. It, it feels unreal <sighs> what we just watched. I want to be in front of someone. Person say this must have happened in, in Atlanta because <laughs> 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 that things like this usually happen. Anyway, from from smartphones and social media to TV and tablet based toys, today's kids are constantly inundated by technology. While it's important for children and teens to develop an aptitude for technology, after all, they will use computers their whole lives. Too much technology use can have detrimental health, moral, and physical effects. Negative effects on children's health run from the gamut from increased risk of obesity to loss of social skills and behavioral problems. Of course, this doesn't mean parents need to ban technology entirely, but it's important for parents to be aware of the potential effects of technology on children and develop strategies to limit their children's screen time. After watching the video we played earlier, it is important that we ask the question, is technology influencing morals and how kids are being raised? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You could also tweet to us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So this is even more about how the girl was... So you can tell that the girl was so upset that yeah. her device was taken yeah. from her. Yeah. And that was why she even attempted to, you know... And I've seen this happen a lot recently. You see three-year-old. I have friends who have kids who are toddlers and, you know, four, five, six uh, as well. And I get it that you're looking for a means to distract your child. Sometimes, you know, the kids can be very overwhelming and you just want to look for a way to just, you know, just shoot and laugh. And the next thing you're playing Coco Melon, two hours. I don't subscribe to it. I, I, I've never understood it and I will never understand it. There are, yes, there are times when you even, you know, you have to play certain maybe lullabies or, yeah, you know, depending yeah. on the age of the child, play ca um, cartoons, make the child watch YouTube videos. Educational videos is what I usually even subscribe most times. And I think you should even ration the time, right? So you know that you can only pick up your tablet between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And that's after you're done with your homework, you've had dinner and all of that. Maybe one hour, 30 minutes, two hours is all you have. And after that, straight to bed. Submit the tablet and go straight to bed. But then when for every time you see the child as a distraction, you just simply want to pass a device onto the child for the child to, you know. And that's why our quote for today is the internet is not a babysitter. Mm. Mm. You think that every time you need, you need to keep the child busy or you need to store the child away, it is by giving the child something to watch or, you know, playing. Some people, I mean, people that have smart TVs in their homes, they then play it on TV yeah. and then child just dead the entire time. And don't you even dare turn off that TV. Is that day you know that a two-year-old can throw tantrums yeah. that can bring a building yeah. down, you know. Yeah. So this is, this is the angle of our, our conversation. Mm, absolutely. Tonight. You know, I, I used to ask people mm. around me or even myself sometimes, like, what makes, I mean, what kind of intellect does a two-year-old or some months old baby mm. have that makes them so focused on a device? A t maybe TV or is it the pictures? Is it? I, I, I don't get it. But again, like you rightly said, it's hard for parents. I mean, parenting, again, can of be course, very overwhelming. Very messy, yeah. Especially in a, in a country like Nigeria, you know. It's very overwhelming, and you just go like, okay, you know what? I've had a long day. Don't stress me. And then you, you give that device. So, again, for me, it is this idea 
that beyond even listening to the child, a child will probably, you know, raise a tantrum or even if they, sometimes children will raise tantrum just because they want your attention. They, they, sometimes they are decidedly, they, they are deliberately not spoken you just yes. because they want your attention. And when you fail to give it, so every time a child throws it, it becomes a pattern, mm -hmm. and the child can process mm -hmm. why I am not getting this thing if this is the response to my tantrum. Yes. I mean, if you don't give me the phone or the tablet tomorrow, then there's a problem. There's a problem. And I don't know, maybe it is because you are so overworked mm. we're so tired we fail to to see that or maybe we're just being woke <laughs> I, I, I don't know <laughs> because i mean the time i've seen kids throw tantrums in supermarkets in public places in churches mm. and it's so embarrassing it's so embarrassing and Personally, I'm very interested in knowing what, I mean, what can be done, you yeah. know, to really, you know, curb this. Because re personally, I think the internet, as good as it is, it's also dangerous, even to adults who can function properly. Yeah. It's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. I mean, TV, social media, whatever. It's dangerous, you know. So, <laughs> Isi, what are your thoughts? You see, it's um, pros and cons, mm. basically. But if I also want to just, you know, chip in a thing or two about that video we played earlier, you know, from a professional point of view, the teacher was wrong in every aspect. But I also want to draw our attention to the fact that the child or the teenager was on duty. Is for us, we need to establish that fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and it was evident that the, the teacher had practically had it up to here with the young lady. She must have tried different ways to interact with her, you know, but it, it just wasn't working. So she had to take it away from her. Now, is it about the phone? No, I think something must have, you know, it must have yeah. been building up before it got to that stage where it escalated to the extent that they had to exchange blows. It still comes back to the point of what is the student's right? As a student, you have the right to do certain things, such as freedom of expression, freedom of advocacy, freedom of, um, freedom of um, to interact, basically, respectfully. But you don't have the right or freedom to harass anyone, including your teacher. So I would say that the teacher, yes, was wrong. The student was also wrong in every aspect. No adult would love to be insulted by a child, not to the extent that the child actually physically attacked her. She slapped her first before the teacher actually decided to, you know, pounce on her. Now, coming down to what internet is all about, is it is internet a blessing or a curse for us, for our children, basically? It has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. Like Diola stated, she said that we needed to look at how it is affecting the children. There should be certain times of the day that the children should have access to the internet because we as adults, we have challenges even dealing with the internet, basically. So when we come back to the children, how will they be able to handle it? Mm. Technology has its pros and cons. Like I said earlier, I stated also that it, in terms of it having its pros and cons, it is what the children are exposed to and what they're using it for. Mm. That is what will affect the morale of that child. Now, if it's for uh, the stage of the child is another thing. We're looking at the ages of the child from zero to anyway, I don't want to go into all that. But the key thing is for us to look at the age of the child and the timeline for the child to have access to the Internet is also quite crucial. And that will lead me to family time. Family time is so essential. How are we? interacting with our children, how are we interacting with the teenagers, how are we interacting with ourselves as a family? Because 
Family, again, is the bedrock of the society. And the moment we fail to have that notion, that is when we now decide to pass that um, responsibility to the tech, uh, to the internet or to, to our tech, tech, um, technological devices, or basically technical devices. So we have this rule or this aspect of us not owning up to our responsibilities and giving our responsibilities to our children to handle. Now, do we also observe what they are exposed to when they are on the internet? That's another thing. Because sometimes you might give the child, oh, your, your assignment is supposed to be on ABC123, yeah. and the child now digresses mm -hmm. to another page. Mm -hmm. Do you come back to see what the child is doing? Do you have access to the child's device to see yeah. what the who the child is chatting with? There has been instances where a child of, of about 12, different instances, basically, of a child of about 12 who actually has... Um, had been interacting with somebody who is much older mm. or an adult, and the man actually, or the men actually wanted to have an uh, have uh, some sort of sexual relationship with the children, mm. undermining the fact that they, the child or whoever they are, are teenagers. Minors, yeah. The parents haven't been on top of their game to actually observe what the child is doing online, talking who they are talking to online having access to control whatever they're doing online. So yes, where the parents are negligent, the family is negligent, yes, morals are affected with the internet usage. Thank you so much. See, that's very well said. I, yeah. I agree with you Absolutely. 100, right? And I like the fact that you've actually stated the pros and the cons. Yeah. The truth is really and truly we're in a digital age now, sure. right? So. Yeah. You cannot keep a child nowadays away from technology. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. The child at some point will need to, you know, use the internet to do some form of homework, some form yes. of research, you know, and, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, I keep saying parental control, very, yeah. very important. I don't, I, don't, I don't joke with it. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, my, uh, my daughter was, uh, something happened. I think she was having a conversation with some of her friends. They have some sort of group. And I'm on that group. And I told her, I said, if you pull, like, remove me. <laughs> remove me from the group. <laughs> so I don't think they're even aware now that I see, you know, the conversations that you have and the kind of things that they talk about and all. And then this afternoon, she forwarded a message to me. You know those messages where they say, there was this little girl, seven years old, who got lost, and then something, 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 she was killed. And when she came back to life, they said, if you don't forward this message to 10 people, your mom is going to die in 365 days. I screamed when I saw that. And I, I called, I was like, excuse me, where did this come from? I said, oh, there was somebody that forwarded. I'm like, no. I think now we need to now start talking about digital yeah. literacy and how to behave on the internet because this is unacceptable. So imagine how many other people yeah. that message has been forwarded yeah. to. Two. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. 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 That's why it's very important for you. It's like I remember when we were growing up, DSTV. There were certain channels that we couldn't watch oh, in my house. Absolutely. Parental lock. Mm -hmm. If my mother does not come and impute the pin, you don't even know the pin. Mm -hmm. If she does not impute, you cannot watch that station, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's where um, the responsibility of the adults in the lives of the children comes in. Yeah. Now yeah. you need to make sure that you are aware of what the children are up to per time. Check. You know, there's there's also a way I'm, I'm aware of. I think Google or Microsoft. There's something you oh, can yeah. do Google. where you can time out, yeah. right? Yeah. And if you if so, if you're giving the child two hours, mm -hmm. you give the child two hours, and after two hours, it locks the, the child yeah. Yeah. out. Yeah. The child now has to call you to ask for access. Yeah. And if at that time you feel like you know what, you shouldn't be on the internet at this time, you don't allow the child access whatever it is mm. they want to access. And that big problem I have, which is even affecting my youngest brother now, is socialization. Mm. See, we can go somewhere, and my youngest brother is. He's four, I think he's 14 or 15 now. He can be in his space and not speak to you. Anyone. I kid yeah. you not. Mm -hmm. And not have a conversation with you six hours straight as long as he has a device with him. Yeah. And the minute you take that device away from him, he struggles to have a conversation. Mm. You literally have to push and push. And I told my mom, I said, it is this phone thing. So now they have a problem because they seize the phone now from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> and I cost it. <laughs> No, but don't you, you see, see that? why that's the reason why we have to have family time. That family time is like family family circle. Everybody comes together. Like in my family, we could have 
um, what was your day like, basically, yeah. at the end of the day? Mm. What was your day like? We talk about this. Everybody sits at the table. Or even in the sitting room, we talk about different things or the highlights of our day. That way, we are able to interact. We are able to connect as a family. We can even sit down and, you know, tell a joke or two. Yeah. It's so important. It mm. enhances the the bond in the family and social skills at the end of the day for the teenagers as well as the parents mm. to be able to relate to other teenagers or other children as well because you cannot build um, uh, give the child such a device and you expect the child to be mm. an Einstein. There's no way it will work. Mm. You just have to help that child to enhance communication skills. Yeah, mm. very true. Mm. Mm. I'm sure Glory is itching to say something, but I would love us to go on a very short break. And when we come back, we'll open our phone lines and continue our conversation. Mm. See you shortly. If you just tuned in to our Ladies Night Out and we're discussing the topic, is technology influencing morals and how kids are being raised? Let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet to us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Our phone line is now open as well. Please call us on 0702500749. Glory! Let's hear your thoughts on this. Um, I mean, you've all said it already. Uh, definitely, technology has either a positive or a negative impact on morals and how kids are being raised. But I would like us, let's shift the direction of the conversation a little bit. For a long time, we've been focusing on how do we monitor kids and um, their usage of technology, how do we control and how do we put in those restrictions? Why don't we move this conversation around a little bit? Because, I mean, there are kids that all of this has been done. They have parents monitoring everything they are doing, but still, they still go out of their way to lose some certain moral values despite the amount of monitoring and discipline being instilled in them. So the question is, as adults, as adults, how far is technology even influencing us? I mean, we have in this um, century now where we as adults, we find it difficult even handling technology. Some people are so addicted to technology, so, so addicted, they cannot leave their phones for, for five minutes. You know, when they go out on family, um, dinner, during the weekends, they all stay on their phones. So as an adult, how are you disciplined? So, because kids, they are watching. So if you tell a kid, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and you, you yourself, you're doing it, and they're watching you do it. So definitely, they will be forced or somehow, they're picking up some of those characters, those habits. I watched a video about a, a mother apparently um, during her child's first birthday putting on a full makeup putting on a full makeup gele, um, and so many things like people were screaming and she did a video I'm pretty sure she learned she's been watching makeup videos and she's looking for a way to apply these makeup videos and definitely she saw her kid as a good example to use but was this proper? No. So we as adults, we need to now shift the conversation to ourselves. What responsibility do we have? It goes beyond just monitoring the kids. Mm -hmm. It goes to the point where we also have to use ourselves set ourselves as example. Mm -hmm. Keep our time you know there are some people where um maybe after working hours um during family time maybe paraventure they just go scroll th through their meals and perhaps see a meal which is annoying and it changes their whole mood and maybe they get all different in terms of their mood and everything and they are watching so how is technology impact in affecting our behaviors as adults because this this and that point where kids are watching us and no matter how much discipline you instill in them if you are not leaving that example you're trying to preach to them it's not, how is it going to work so let's shift the direction of the conversation a little bit to also take some responsibility. How are we being disciplined? How is technology affecting our morals? We are watching videos and we don't even know these videos we watch or the things we allow technology, we expose the sort of information we are exposed to through technology, how it's affecting us as adults and how our kids watching us are picking up this habit and character. Mm. 
Thank you very much. You well said, and I like how yeah. you have brought to, brought that to our, yeah. um, our, our awareness as well. It's also very important to live an exemplary yeah. lifestyle, yeah. you yeah. know, because the truth is that if as if as an adult you have children around, maybe your nieces, your nephews, your children, whatever it is, and every time they see you on your phone, the truth is that these children now they will even tell you. But you are. But you are always on your phone yeah. too. Yeah. At that point, what do you say, right? So that's actually very correct. Thank you so much, yeah. Glory. Remember, our phone line is now open. Also, please call us on zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. We can't wait to hear from you. Dela, you were going to say something. Oh yeah, I'm, um, I was going to say that. I think for me, the most profound thing is how um, well technology, mostly social media. You know, the use of social media has stunted. Mm our communications. You know, we've forgotten what it means to have human, human relations. relations. True. We can't sit down and hold conversations. Mm. It's a problem. Yes. And you're, you're like, you're doing five minutes conversation and you're like, ah, ah, don't Android. talk too much now, <laughs> you know. And you want to go back to your phone looking at things you probably have no business looking at, mm. you know. And then, you know, again, when we don't communicate with each other, there's a lot of strife. There's a lot of um, regret. There's a lot of, we don't have that cohesiveness, yeah. you know, and that's a problem, of course, family yeah. to nation, yeah. to nation building, to everything. We can't, we can't raise kids properly because if you can't even find the right words to communicate with your children, and the honest truth is when kids ask, but why? It is not because we don't know. Mm. Sometimes it is because we lack the words to communicate or we lack the, we feel, we feel uncomfortable having conversations. And you know these kids, of course, they're, they're way too curious, smart yes. and they're very bold. Mm. They won't just, unlike when we were growing up, you know, I mean, your parents tell you, <laughs> you won't question. These kids will question and they will say, why? I don't understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> very, 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 <laughs> very, very, exactly. Yeah. So we need to understand that it is our responsibility, like Glory said, that we must, in fact, we must up our communication game. That's very, very, very key. True, very, very, key, key very, Thank key, you. very key. Okay, we have a caller, Friday from Benin. Hi, Friday. Good evening. Hello, Friday. We can hear you. Good evening. Okay, I think we lost mm -hmm. we lost that caller. Please do well to call us back. And don't forget to turn down the volume of your devices yeah. so that it doesn't clash with um, the feedback from the studio. Yeah, so um, you would say it's, 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 it's quite... Um, and it's unfortunate because of the our world right now, right? Mm. The truth is you can't avoid these oh, things. Yeah. You cannot avoid these things. I always say it so from doing assignment to you know even the things that recreational activities in quotes now mm -hmm. so even the kids when they go out as well the kind of activities that that um, they are involved you know they are yes, made to participate in yes you know there are things that would actually encourage them to be on 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 the internet or mm -hmm. you know be on their devices and all of that so now my question is how do we where do we begin to draw the line and how do we even start to draw this line how do we control it mm. how can we help the children how can we've talked about parental control and you mm. know trying to monitor but there's really there's there's so much there's really mm. so much you can there's do so with much. monitoring there's right so but mm. then what else can we do how else can we can we curb this um, well, I think it goes back to what um, Isis said that um, really we must be intentional about even, you know, getting down to the point of speaking to kids to let them understand the pros and the cons. Mm. I mean, technology for all it's worth is fantastic. It has brought about some major advancement in the world. But again, we've seen how it has become a toxic place. You know, we've seen how it brings about some form of pressure, even on adults, not to talk of kids, the, the need to be perfect, the need to be a certain way because you think that's the standard, you know. So, again, it comes right down to talking, you know. We just need to sit down and get to the, you know, to the nitty-gritty and say, okay, listen, no, I may not be as techie savvy or mm. it's not like I, I don't want you to, to do what your friends are yeah. doing but you need to also understand the risk 
that comes with it. You need to understand your responsibility being an internet user. Because we, I mean, as, as, a, as, as an internet user, you also have a responsibility. Definitely. How to talk, how to mm -hmm. behave, the mm -hmm. culture, everything online. You have to understand. We need to teach kids how to be cyber safe. You know, even as we ourselves, as yes. adults, yeah. you know, we take on these lessons and... Um, yeah, yeah, I think that works for me. If I may, if I may step in, if I may step in, you, you also made a, a, a salient point in terms of us, you know, being um, careful mm -hmm. as individuals on the internet. Another point we also need to look at is our role in the society, our role as individuals in our home, our roles, the roles we play. Because we all play, play different roles. We play the role of sister, we play the role of father, we play the role of brother, we, different roles. And at the same time, we have to play roles of parents, okay? Or teachers. In this context, is the role we play. Is the role we are playing, is it, um, is it giving the right vibe to the, to the young one or the child that is close to us? Is like um, Glory stated earlier, is it giving the right vibe to that child? Is the child actually learning something that is positive or is learning something negative from us? If we have our way, if we can do something much better than what we, what we have in the society today, we should also look at the environment. Is the environment conducive enough for us to actually say, okay, today is going to be family time. We are going to sit down and talk about ABC and not thinking about, oh, I know, um, and a Manila is about to bust into the house or something, or is, is or sport prowling around or doing something. So the, the environment we also find ourselves also plays a huge role in how we engage the child. If you're engaging the child in technology to, you know, to be, um, to, be um, invested um, emotionally or psychologically in, in technology, then we should have the impetus to actually guide the child right in the environment to do what is right, to act accordingly. And we as examples do the right thing for them. Mm. Okay, Glory. Um, I will cite an example again um, for the video. Um, Above all of this, another thing which um, I believe parents should also look at is how to teach their children about emotional intelligence. So I'm, I'm suggesting that maybe in the sort of environment that child grew up in, it's an environment where she gets everything she wants and she, she whenever she yeah. throws tantrum, she can easily get her way. And so mm -hmm. she's used to that. And maybe she's sort of using that same technique. Um, I've been watching a series of videos on emotion, um, emotional intelligence and just how to teach a child to master emotional intelligence, how to know when to um, draw, how to okay. set boundaries, how to respect boundaries, mm -hmm. and how to know when to when someone says no or an elder says no, you know, you respect that. So if we can also imbibe that, included in everything we're doing, more, the monitoring, we ourselves being an example, then we're also teaching our kids emotional intelligence, how to respect others, how to know when to draw the line to say, okay, no matter what I do, I'm not getting this and that's fine. It's okay not to have it. And I don't need to, to act up or act out just to have my way. So all of those sort of education is also very important in, you know, building a moral or children's moral um, values in the face of this uh, technological age. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Larry. Another perspective we can also look at is, hello? Yes. Another go. perspective is peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Peer pressure plays another role, mm -hmm. okay? In terms of in the, the, who these children are actually interacting with. Are the children more tech savvy? Are they more interested in the technological devices instead of having to have a one-on-one -on -one with their peers? If they have the peer, uh, they have friends that are not interested in things like these, then they would definitely, definitely rather um, interact physically with their peers. 
But if they have friends that would want it, you know, oh, you're not trendy. You don't know what's up. You don't know what is uh, what is going on if you don't decide to, you know, you don't know how to use the PS4. Oh my gosh, you must be from the dark ages, something like that. And you find your the child actually, you know, going into it. And probably that child who tends to go into it might now get addicted, addicted to it. The moment the child gets addicted to it, then it starts to go downhill from there. So peer pressure plays a huge role, especially the age. Again, the age is all about the age. If it's a teenager, peer pressure plays a huge role. If it's um, from, let's say from zero to five, then the parents have a huge role, a huge responsibility in terms of how the children are Interacted, uh, interactive with the uh, technological devices. Mm. It, it's, it's very funny because you know that these children are exposed to all sorts of things, right? So there's this show on Nickelodeon that shows a child, I think the girl is what, maybe 11? They're about 12, and then she has a crush, and then she's developing the <laughs> crush and going ahead to shoot her shot and things like that. And, children watch these yeah. things, and in their head, they're beginning to it's, form yeah. ideas, yeah. you know, in their head. Which is why I'm I'm still saying it. It's very important to watch what it is that yeah. they are doing. On Absolutely. The internet. Absolutely. Also, there are different platforms. Now I hear that they play games where yeah. you can someone else can be in whatever country yeah. and then you can be playing games with the person and and interacting yes. with yes. the person yeah. as yeah. well. Yes. That's that's I mean Or there's even a game you you I mean you as a parent you just feel oh okay I've played this game maybe the Before. first or second mm. but by the time the child gets to maybe like the Another seventh level, level it becomes totally horrific, mm. like cyberbullying, like yes. major. Tr like it's it's just they, see to to be in this game as parents, you need to even understand what the game is it's first. About. First, mm -hmm. that's the only way because sure. it it keeps evolving every day. You need to literally stay one step ahead. Mm -hmm. And yes, kids would always find a way because they're curious. <laughs> they go to school. They have friends, but yes, again. <laughs> You also have to just do your own part and just hope for the best, yes, really, actually, really, actually. really, really. Okay, I think we have a comment, Jada. Um, okay, so this is Austin from Delta. My take is that um, there's a total breakdown of morals in the society. Even in the church, most worshippers, on the pretext of using the Bible for scripture searching, are glued to WhatsApp and other social network platforms. Many accidents occurred because of use of cell phones. Moderation is key. On that disturbing brawl, the, on that disturbing brawl, the teacher shouldn't have engaged her in a fight despite the slap. There are many ways to kill a rat. For the boy to, for the girl to have the effrontery to challenge the teacher was enough red flag for the teacher to know that the girl is not only wayward but has no good upbringing. Go and profile her. It's either she's suffering from psychological torture from broken home or the parents are absentee parents. Mm. Thank you very much, Justin. I mean, you we really don't know what happened yeah, in that video, right? And like you said, yeah. it must have been a build up because yeah. I don't mm. think that the child would have just been riled up like that. And yeah. the child have yeah. Sometimes, and this is me speaking from experience, you have certain, you have, you meet all sorts of children in school, mm, right? Mm. And then there are some children that are just peculiarly stubborn, mm. right? And you know that <laughs> this one, and as a human being, no, that you have to, like Doris said, you have to be emotionally intelligent. Yeah. But at the same time, you are, hu you, are hum you are human. You will get to a breaking point yeah. where that child must have pushed you so much. And this is not Nigeria. In, in, in Nigeria, we're very morally yeah um what's it called we have moral values True. you don't want to see what is going on in other countries they're trying in the western Absolutely. world mm. Mm. it is it's crazy it is it, it's it is. crazy it is and this you don't you the, the teacher can only do so much you there's anything you can't say to yeah. the child right yeah. yeah so you we don't know the true story of what must have happened how long they had been having this kind of issues because i remember the girl kept saying you are holding on to my device you're not holding on to other people's devices so mm. there's something that must have happened there but despite that i agree that the teacher shouldn't have gotten um that far and she shouldn't have done that to to the child anyway okay i think we have a caller hello good evening hello good evening good evening Sorry, thank you. I just would like to. 
I just would like to add to all you've um, in um, discussing. I agree with all the all the points you have all made, but I just would like to add um, some points that we should not give up as parents. We shouldn't give up the fight. My kids, I have a teenager, but I refuse to allow them have a device to themselves. It is not a, because we feel like if, if our kids are not part of it, then they are not cool or they are not clued up. But there's, 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 an, there's an imminent danger in, in, in all of these devices and being online and being unsupervised. Yeah. So they don't have to have a cell phone before age 16 or 18. Mm. And it's just a fight. We feel like as parents, if we don't allow our kids to have it, then we're, you know, right. maybe right. making things worse. But I think we should stand our ground and insist on the kids not having these devices before age 18, I would say. Yeah. I completely agree with you. Thank you very much, Essie. So this, we fought this battle. <laughs> I wasn't going to allow my daughter to have a phone mm. I, I, because I, I, I don't understand it, right? But then... Saying you might have to call her, you know, you're not always with her. You might have mm. to speak to her at some point so that if there's anything, she can easily send mm. you a message. And I'm just like, okay, because left to me, mm. maybe until she gets into senior secondary, mm. right? Because the truth is, if you need to maybe research or something, you have they are the or they're like there's a computer for you to check whatever it is you want to check on the internet. So I agree with, with what Esther is saying. There should be an age where you say, okay, those the one that beats me is you see people driving and then and child yeah. is at the back. The child at back and child is with that tab and yeah. that thing annoys my soul and my spirit. <laughs> because I feel you you've 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 literally made the internet a babysitter at that point. Mm. Right? You don't know now for babies, let me not say babies, let me say from infanthood to being a toddler. So let me say from zero to three years old, yeah. for example. The more you expose these children to these things, the, the, the lesser they are able to relate with you and, yes, you see, from the even, relationship. Sometimes they won't start yeah. behaving like what they are watching. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why if you go to some schools, right, especially schools that are following proper, maybe like the EYFS curriculum or the, the standard British curriculum, you see that they don't have televisions in the rooms. Mm. They don't allow the children, you know, watch. Their screen time is, they reduce screen time so much that Maybe when you go home, you can you're allowed maybe one hour of screen time. Mm -hmm. But in the school premises, it's not allowed. You see all that one you're playing old McDonald's, had a farm. Play it on the um, what's it called the stereo. Let mm -hmm. the children hear it. They would even you know listen to you better and 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 all of that. Anyway, I think it's been a great conversation. Oh, it has been. It has tonight. Been. It I've has enjoyed been. this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that all that we've said has been taken note of, and parents will begin to do better. Adults will also begin to take responsibility of their um of technology as well so before we go do ensure you follow us on instagram at we show africa you can interact with us further drop a comment and most importantly follow all our social media engagements and remember to like share comment and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us if you missed today's quotes here it is again the internet is not a babysitter see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen